That's why when God calls us, he calls us to positionally place us in his body. And the prophet says, some to be housewife, some to be farmers, some to be teachers, some to be mechanics, some to be drivers. What are you? The work you are doing there, what are you? How can we classify that work? Information technologist. Eh? Is it? <laughs> Professor, how, do we, how can we classify him? <laughs> you are dealing with IT, information technology. Is it? Yes. God calls all manner of people, all manners of technology into his kingdom for his glory. So what you are doing there is very important. If we didn't have you, how would we do that? If we didn't have people to know this, how to operate these uh, uh, instruments, how could we do it? We could not. We could not put these things on the, on the streaming. But because God positionally places people in different careers, in different categories, in different technologies for his own glory and for his own honor. So when God calls you, God doesn't call you just to stay and to be there. He calls you and he gives you some work to do. And that's why God wants to save people when they are young. When, when their minds are still fresh. Are we together? Yeah? Before their minds are spoiled, intoxicated for his glory and for his kingdom. God wants young people. God wants fresh people. God wants energetic people. You think God wants just drunkard people? Sometimes we, we bring drunkard people, people who are wasted, people who are sick, people who are old, can't walk, can't do anything for God. They are the people, many people say they are the people to go to God. No, God also wants young people, people who are energetic, people with the knowledge to serve Him. Are we together? And that's why the prophet says in this message, uh, brother, I want, I want you to come to a message. I will tell you this message. Uh, this is 630601. 630601. Come follow me. Paragraph 44. Forty-three. Sometimes we ask, now, what am I supposed to do as a young person? Yes, that is it. Mm. But here is what it is. What's in the kid is going to come out. No matter where it is. It is going to come out. It is going to come out. If it is evil. No matter where it is. Whatever, what it, whatever it is. Where it is, it's going to come out. If it's evil in there, it will come out in the Indian camp. It will come out in any camp, see? It's what is in the kid, the makeup of the kid. What's on the inside of you? 
and what you are now is what you are probably is what you are probably be the rest of your life you are on a changing spot You know what what we are saying is this when God calls us he calls us to serve us and then he positionally places us give us some work to do God doesn't call you for no reason he calls people for reasons some to be preachers some to be prophets some to be teachers some to be various things for his glory and for his kingdom and whatever is inside of you will come out if it is good it will come out one day if it is bad it will come out one day but we hope when we are saved good things comes out of us because the fountain is of god and god is the fountain of good things are we together so you are on a changing spot do you know what 86% of the conversions to Jesus Christ is done before 21 years old. Before 21 years old. It shows it. Statistics show it. 86% that come to Christ come before they are 21 after that you pass that age you become more molded or set in your ways <laughs> that's why sometimes we tell young men that after college and then you have an opportunity a, a, a job any job you prepare to marry yeah because beyond that it reaches a time you become set in a way that the every girl you find is not ready is not good for you and time goes on and goes on you get set you cook for yourself you wash for yourself you do everything for yourself you have a budget of a single person one man a small kafuria with the small two cups. You get set in a way that it's you and you alone. And years may go on, may go on, may go on. The moment you marry, this girl will find it very difficult to be accommodated by you. And that's why the prophet says, Make yourself, make yourself when you are young. Make your ambitions clear. Make your visions clear when you are young. Because it reaches a certain age that you are set in a way that nobody can even advise you. There are people when you try to advise them, they also quote messages to you. <laughs> You are a pastor, you are telling this young man this is the way to do. He also quotes for you. But remember, the prophet also says this. <laughs> so you are set in a way that nobody will ever advise you. So, uh, they come 70 and 80 years old, but it is very rare. People don't get saved when they are old. It is very rare. You make yourself when you are young. You set your ambitions to what you want to do. Because when you are young, you can be, ad you are ad you can be advised. <laughs> you are advisable. You are teachable. You can be guided. But there is an age where when you pass, you feel you are an adult. You feel you can. You are independent. There are people who say they are independent. 
I'm independent of my, my parents. I'm independent of the pastor. I'm independent. But for sure, nobody is independent. If we are children of God, we must be led by the word of God. So, do you know? Do you know what? You make yourself when you are young. You make yourself when you are young. You set your ambitions to what you want to do. And what you are trying to achieve in life. You think of it. And as you think of it, oh, and as you think, of course, your mind, it is represented into your mind by an unknown something. And that's God that dominates you. If you are born again, it's God. If you are not born again, it's the devil. Then you speak it, that you are going to do it. And then your ambitions drive you to it. Kuna watu unamuuliza bwana unampango gani? Anasema mimi niko tu. No plan, no ambition, no vision, no nothing. Niko tu. And many people who say mimi niko tu ndio hao shetani anachukua sana. Sababu shetani anapenda watu kama hao. Idle people. Hata kama umesoma na hujapata ile kazi umesomea kuna kitu unaweza fanya si ndio? Yes. Wewe sema ati mimi niko tu. Kazi yako ni kuamka asubuhi, chai imepikwa ukunywe, urudi kulala. Hakuna kitu unafanya. Unatoka unaenda kutembea kwa, kwa maduka huko, alafu narudi nyumbani, hata nyumbani pia usaidii kazi. Wewe uko tu na ukiambiwa wewe ni mkali, una threaten watu. You see the spirit behind you is a bad spirit. It's not a good spirit. You cannot threaten your parents. Mbaka wengine wanatisha wazazi ati mimi naweza kujinyonga. Si utajinyonga tu ukufe na tuzike. Eh. Na tusahau tu. Ya? It is very bad to be idle. You must have ambitions. Yeah? You must have something that you are working upon to achieve. It is if it is a career if you are in school, you study. Yes? You work very hard. If it is work, do it. If you are employed, do it as if you are doing it for the Lord. Sindio Jimmy? Yes. So you make ambitions, your plans when you are young. Never think that you will plan anything when you are old. You are not going to plan anything. And remember Youthful life is just like a flower is passing. There are times you will not be a youth. Age will catch with you up. So you better use your youthful days for the glory of God and for the things that will help you in life. Are we together? So you make yourself when you are young. You know sometimes back there when we were young we used to say when I grow up I want to be a teacher I want to be a doctor I want to be a, a pilot When I grow up Although we didn't become what we wanted to become but at least we have some ambitions that were driving us somewhere So unaona hata ingawa mimi pengine nilitaka niwe daktari lakini si kuwa <laughs> Lakini hii ambition ilinisukuma. Na hata saa hii nikipewa nafasi naweza kuwa daktari. 
You know ambition is that as bad watu wanakufanga na ambition <laughs> and dreams. You achieve this then the following day you you want you have another dream. So people are full of dreams. Wewe wezi kaa hapo bila any dream watu huko tu. Ukiuliza what do you want to be? Ati chochote, I want to be anything. Hey, that's dangerous. You can't be anything. Anything means nothing. So, we must have ambitions that will drive us. And we make our life when we are young. We get salvation when we are young. We get ambitions and inspiration and our dreams right when we are young. So that they will drive us. If you don't have any ambition, you don't have any dream, the devil will, 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 will get you somewhere. And the devil will ruin you. That's why you find young people for your age today, most of them have been ruined. Some are in drugs, some are in bad behaviors, lesbianism, homosexuality, and many, many, many other things. Hmm? Why? They didn't have an ambition. And many of us, even when we are in colleges, no ambition. Somebody paid for a lot of money to take you to college. But you join a group that has no ambition, has no dream, dreams, you start drinking, taking drugs. And like today, there are sponsors there. There are men there with the money. Yeah? You know young girls? You are the most hunted. You are the most hunted ones. Kila mwanamuma nakutaka tu. Hata huyo boda boda unapenda zaana. Boda boda nakutafuta. Manamba wa magari nakutafuta. Dereba nakutafuta. Unaenda college hata watchmen wanakutafuta hata wapishi wanakutafuta hata lecturers mm there are some bad lecturers wanapenda kuchukua wasichana kuharibu alafu wanawapea marks yenye hawajasomea chochote hawajapita chochote wanawapea those things are happening in the world we live in today so you must have some ambition and inspiration and you must know what you are here for you must know yourself better what am i here for do you love god eh namuna nyamaza sawa so the bible says having made known unto us the mystery of his will. It's God who has the plan of your life. And God's plan in your life is a mystery. And that's why you must seek for it. Why did you bring me here, God? What am I here for? Where are you taking me? Where am I going? What am I to do? Are we together? And the mystery of God's will is only known through his word. When it's revealed to you, then you know, oh, this is what God intended for me, to be a teacher to be an IT manager, to be a professor, to be a doctor, to be a teacher, to be this and that. Are we together? Then you know. And the prophet says, for you to know God's will in your life, in whatever you do, for you to know, is when God blesses it. Are we together? Is when God blesses what you are doing, then you know this is God's will. If he doesn't, then that is not God's will. You continue to seek for God's will. Are we together? Amen. That's why you find somebody starts a certain business, it doesn't work. He starts another one, it doesn't work. He does another one until he reaches a time where he finds something that it is now working. 
God is now blessing it. And then you know that is God's will in my life. Are we together? Yes? That one even goes even to the person you will marry. It is God's will. You pray over it for God to lead you and guide you. Because sometimes you can marry a wrong person. Jimmy. Hey. Unaweza oh mwanamke akutandike makofi. Eh? Afike wakati anavaa longi. Ana smoke, cigarette. Anakuambia tonight I'm going for a disco. What are you going to do? And that's why nyinyi ambao mujaoa mtu asikudanganya ati uende uoe kafiri. Utakuja kulia. Wachana na makafiri. Wametesa watu wale wa ndugu wameenda huko nje kuoa makafiri. Wanalia hata saa hii. Mpaka kafiri anamuuliza, "Kwa nini uliacha wasichana wazuri kanisani? Ukakuja kwangu." Ona ile dhaki mtu anakufanyia. So no matter how whatever happens, just marry a believer. That's what the prophet says. Sawa sawa. So you make your ambitions and your plans when you are young. Brother, uh, give me 60 0522E. The mystery of his will. Ah uh, 60.05.22e Adoption part 4 Paragraph 15 to The mystery of his will. Sixty zero five twenty two E Paragraph from paragraph fifteen Wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery of his will the mystery of his will and remember how we hang on that uh, god's will is a mystery and each man has to seek out the will of god for his or herself yeah God's will is a mystery and each man has to seek out the will of God for his or herself. Every young person must seek God's will in your life. 
You must ask God. What did you call me for? Why did you bring me here? What do you want me to do, God? Where are you taking me? You must seek God's will in your life. Are we together? Yes. How do we find out? Paul, it was known to him. He said he didn't confer with any man, no flesh and blood. He went to no school, no seminary. He had nothing to do with it. But it was revealed to him by Jesus Christ, who met him on the road to Damascus, a light like a pillow of fire, and it called him, and he went to Arabia, and there dwelt three years. Don't you imagine that was some, some time, Prophet Egan, three years, poured down there in Arabia, rented him a little building somewhere, walking up and down the floor with all the old scrolls. They didn't have the new ones. Paul wrote them, mostly, right in this old scroll, how that God at the beginning predestinated us unto eternal life, how that he would send Jesus, that through this sacrifice we would all have a right to the tree of life. Those who he foreknew, he called. Those who he called, he has already justified. Those who he justified, he has already glorified. God, since the beginning of the world, predestinated us to the adoption of sons. Are we together? Adoption means blessing. Blessing people in the body of Jesus Christ. Now get this one. 600515E paragraph 110 600515E 0515E adoption part 1 paragraph 110 Now who could doubt that? That's what Paul said. That is Paul's scripture. That's Paul's writing. That's what he taught his church. The church positionally, before the foundation of the world. When God in his labor pain was bringing forth, bringing forth you, knowing what you would do, he positionally placed you into his own body to be a housewife, to be a farmer, to be a preacher, to be a prophet, to be this or to be that. He placed you positionally. Are we together? Yeah? It's God. When God calls you, he calls you to position you, to give you some work to do. You may not be a teacher of the word of God, but you are a teacher at school. And you do it as you are doing for the Lord. You are a farmer. You do it as you are doing it for the Lord. You are employed somewhere. You do it as you are doing it for the Lord. Because you are a Christian. Are we together? Yeah. The prophet says, all of us cannot do one single thing. We are positionally placed differently. We are nurtured differently. We are made differently. And everybody has a position that you will occupy in the kingdom of God. You can be a pianist. You play piano in the church for the glory of God. Are we together? Yeah? You can be a mechanic. You are doing it for God. You are doing it as if you are doing it for God. So every one of us must seek God's will in our life. What did God call you to be? And we said for you to know that whatever you are doing is the will of God. Is when God comes down and blesses it. Then you know this is God. When he doesn't, then you know it's not God.
Like I was talking about Rachel, a shepherd girl. She knew this is the occupation that I am called to do in our family. Even some of us, our families have some businesses. We don't even want to associate with them. We want something special, something different. <laughs> Who knows? That whether the family, whatever the family is doing, that is your occupation. That's what God called you to do. Maybe your parents are just preparing it for you. But many of us would not want to associate with what the parents are doing. Ata kama mama nauza maembe pale. Nakuta msichana wezi taka kuenda kuhuza maembe. Naona hiyo ni kazi kidogo sana. Families ingini unakuta baba mefuga kuku ama mama mefuga kuku. Kwa toki hata kuenda kulisha kuku. Unajuaje? Je unajua Mungu alikuitia kufanya nini? Pengine Mungu alikuita uwe mfugaji wa kuku. Na utaki kujikusisha na hata kuku zenye ziko nyumbani. Badala yake unapiga ukivunja miguu. Hmm. Lakini ikipikwa nyama nayo unakula. Hmm. So we are naturally different. We are made different for different work. That's why you find in the Old Testament God was giving knowledge to people some to work with the woods some to work with the stones some to work with the uh, uh, some were builders some different people some could make clothes it was God who was giving that knowledge to people because he knew his temple would want some tailors to make the gowns for the priests, some builders to build the temple in the right way, some to deal with the metal work. When you read the Bible, you will find out that it was God who was lowering that knowledge to people so that his work may be, be done in an easy way. So every one of us must seek God's will to know in life what did God call me to do? Because you will never remain young forever. Age is catching up with you. Very soon you will not be a young person. So we must work towards achieving our ambitions in life. Ukifika umuru ya kuolewa Lazima uwe mtu ambaye unaweza oleka. Yes, you must be a girl who can be marriageable. Let me use such a language. Uswe tu msichana, wewe unaona miaka inaenda na unariga tu. Wewe unakataa kataa tu wa ndugu na kataa tu. Miaka itaenda utabaki tu hapo. Na usipochunga mwisho utaanguka. So in life you must have ambitions and plans sidio and dreams and you cannot have dreams that you will never achieve dreams must be achieved achievable dreams sustainable are we together eh hey. wezi kuwa na dream paka unakufa hujaachieve hiyo sio dream unakuwa na dream ambayo unaachieve inapita tena unakuwa na ingine unaachieve inapita si ati dream yako ni kuoa alafu huowi unakaa miaka inaenda miaka inaenda kuna ndugu mwingine ameoa kericho huko at the age of of 63 ni wangapi mliona hiyo kwa whatsapp kwa kwa kwa, inter, kwa internet 63 Asha retire after three years. <laughs> you see there are some people with the funny dreams. <laughs> you must have a dream that you will achieve at a certain time. 
Umepata hiyo inenio tumetaka kusoma eh, eh, eh. Be a housewife To be Knowing what you do do He positionally places you into his own body To be a housewife To be a farmer To be a preacher To be a prophet To be this or to be that He places you positionally Then when we have come from the Gallic lands of Egypt Through sanctification and is baptized into the promised land, or the promise of God is the Holy Ghost. Are we together? Amen. So we must have dreams that are achievable. Careers that are achievable. Yeah? That's right. Let's go, go back to our pamphlet there. Oh. When are we, when are we supposed to, 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 to stop? When is our lunch time? A half past. So I have 30 minutes. Thank you. Bro, give me fifty five. 55 0116A fifty-five zero eleven six A the believer's position uh God calls us and positions us. He calls us and gives us responsibilities so that we become responsible young believers, responsible adults. 55 0116A. Fifty five zero eleven one part. Did ya? Paragraph forty six. Paragraph forty six. Paragraph 46 to 50. It says, uh, forty-six. Forty-six. But notice. But notice, we are talking about position. And uh, the prophet is giving us a, a story how they used to do it in the Old Testament to adopt children in the home or in the family. The day come, you know, when you are born in the family of God, 
Just like when you are born where we are born. Being born in a family does not position you. You and a slave, there is no difference between a slave and you until you are placed. To go pamoja, eh? Ukiwa kwa familia umezaliwa, ni sawa umezaliwa, lakini hakuna tafauti yako na yule mtu anafanya kwa shamba, yule ameajiriwa kuchunga geti, hakuna tafauti yako na huyo. Mpaka ifike wakati familia ikupee jukumu. Iseme sasa wewe ndiyo utakuwa unachunga huyu mtu wa geti, wewe ndiyo utakuwa unachunga yule yako kwa shamba, wewe ndiyo utakuwa unachunga. Lazima familia iku, ikupatie jukumu. Kama haijakupatia jukumu wewe na mtumwa ni sa? Si mzeme bwana. Si yu ni ukwi. <laughs> Kama familia haijakupea jukumu, si wewe ni mtu huko tu. Eh. Hey. Lakini sasa kwa Mungu pia si zote tunaweza zaliwa kwa Mungu na tuwe wana wa Mungu. Lakini mpaka ifike wakati Mungu anakupa jukumu. So kuzaliwa tu haitoshi. Lazima upewe juku To be born in the family of God is not enough God must come and position you Akupee jukumu kazi ya kufanya Hapo ndiyo tuko But notice this father then The day come when this boy may be Had been alright and was worthy man He listened to the father he took instruction nataka msikie haya maneno ambaye nabi anaongea even in the natural lazima uwe mtu ambaye unasikiza wazazi <laughs> mnasikia waduku vijana mnasikia eh he listened to the father he took instructions he was a good boy then the father taken him out into the public street and then he put a special clothes on him and then the father had a ceremony and adopted this his, his son into his family Paul saying here having predestinated us unto adoption unto the adoption and then this son after he came out there was given no longer was he just like the servant and a tutor he was the boss amen i hope this socks really deep going to leave you in a minute he was given some responsibilities so positions comes with responsibilities because you have been a good girl in the family listening to the parents taking instructions carefully you are a good boy listening to your parents taking instructions uh, uh, carefully then the family says now he will be in, in charge of our holy cell there of our small duka there he will be in charge of this he will be in charge of that is now the family is now positioning you giving you responsibilities so responsibilities are never given to lazy people responsibilities has been to lazy ndo amapewa kuosha mashani wakati sahani zinaenda kutumika sabuni iko juu ya mazani lazy Responsibilities has been lazy people and God hates lazy people. So as young as we are we must prove that we are hard working. Huh? So the father says you will be in charge of that, you will be in charge of that, you will be in charge of that. Why? You have proved it to them that you are capable you are able to do it you can be many people in the family and you find there are just a few who are given responsibilities others are wasteful prodigal 
Do you know prodigal? Prodigal means wasteful. You can be a prodigal son. You can be a prodigal daughter. A wasteful person. When you are given pocket money to last you one month, within two weeks, no money. Wasteful. <laughs> are you getting it? So responsibilities, uh, 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 positions, comes with responsibilities. Give, a, give me that quote. Uh, uh, Six five zero two seventeen. Six five zero two seventeen. Six five zero two seventeen. And then we will break for our lunch. Six five zero two fifteen uh, uh, seventeen sorry six five zero two seventeen six five zero two seventeen can read from paragraph forty six there so positions, when God calls you, he positions you, and then you become a responsible person. If you are not responsible, then there is no need for God to position you. The Bible says here, and Jonah here was called on as this, one of the minor prophets of the Bible, to go down to this city. And here we find an example of all of us. Every one of us, we always are running from, some, from something. We run from trouble. We run from responsibilities. Are you seeing young people? People are not ready, even young people are not ready to take up responsibilities. In some families today, you find the mother is doing every work. Paka analeta chakula kwa meza. Alafu anaenda kuita vijana wakubwa, wamemea mandevu. Mama anaenda kuita hao wakuje kwa meza wakule. Mama hata anaosha hao mikono. <laughs> Umeona bwana vile tuko na tabu. Si so unaona tabu iko? Eh. Hey. Wewe kazi yako ni kulala, kuna kazi unafanya nyumbani. Ni mama anashughulika na baba. Mpaka wanapika chakula, wanakuja kukuita ukuje ukule wameweka hapo maji mpaka wanakuogesha mikono hata ile sabuni ya kufinya wanakufinyilia kwa mikono because umeenda university <laughs> running from responsibilities god does not call you to be a lazy person god calls you to give you some duties to do and you must take up your duties responsibly and God works with responsible people and if it is you it is you nobody can take your place hapo ndiyo tu shida iko yenye Mungu alifanya ya kwamba kama ni wewe ni wewe tu na hata ukijaribu kukhepa hata kusukuma ni wewe utafanya tu so you better do it ali mapema unaona Si anaita yona. Anamtuma ni nevi. And then Jonah starts to have excuses. We normally have excuses in order to run away from responsibilities. 
Oh, I am too young. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I am sick. Oh, I am this. Oh, I am studying. Oh, I am doing this. Oh, so many excuses in order to run away from responsibilities. And especially the age we live in. We are living in an age where young people are too lazy to take up responsibilities. Even the young boys who are very hard working, today they don't work. They don't do anything. What were men who are very lazy? Now, if you are lazy, let me ask you, if you are lazy the way you are, how are you going to run your family? Ndugu, kama utakuwa, hutaki kwenda kufanya kazi, kabila kazi ile ya digiri patikane, hutaki hata kwenda mujengo, hutaki hata kufanya jojote, Iyo kazi sipo kuja. Utaseeka hivyo? Sitabidi uwe na familia. Na ukipata watoto si watataka kwenda shule. So we must be ready to take up responsibilities. Mesikia wadada? Hii. Si umeona Rebek, Re, Rachel. She added value to her family. And the age we live in. Life is not simple. Even you young girls, you must work very hard. Kama ni masomo soma vizuri, upate kitu ambayo ata weo utaadi value kwa nyumba. Wanaume hawataki wadada wakukaa tu nyumbani. I tell you the truth. Iyo ilikuwa ya wazazu wetu. Na hata wazazu wetu walikuwa naenda kulima shamba. Hakuna mama alikuwa nakaa nyumbani. In fact, nowadays, hakuna mambo ya housewife. Hakuna, kila mtu anaenda kufanya kibarua. Ili wachangie kwa ekonomi ya familia. So, wewe usikae tu hapo dada, ati ntapata ndugu mwenye hako na kazi, atakuwa naleta nyumbani, mimi kazi yangu ni kukula, tu na guzawa watoto. <laughs> ati kazi yangu ni kufanya nishi. Situambiade ukweli. Ati kazi yangu mimi ni kula na kuzalia huyu mtu watoto. Lakini watoto pia watakuja na majukumu. Hawakuji bure. <laughs> na bwana akifutwa. Na wewe hata mboga pekee uuzi. Ufanyi chochote. You are like a goalkeeper. Mnajua goalkeeper? <laughs> Golikipa anakaanga kwa goli wafanyi kazi yoyote wale wachezaji wanacheza huko wanacheza huko wana... yeye yeah, amekaa tu kwa goli kama opponent hawatapiga bao hapa hakuna kazi anafanya anategemea defense iwe very strong ili hata boli isifike kwake so yeye yeah, anakaanga tu akiangalia ni golikipa we don't have golikipas today wa nyumbani kila mtu lazima work very hard Young girls, mnanisikiza vizuri. You must add value to the family where you are going to get married to. No man wants to marry a liability. Do you know liability? A liability is anything that takes money out of your pocket. That is a liability. An asset adds money brings something <laughs> on the table so no any young boy want to marry a liability so we must work very hard when we are young if we are taken to school work very hard so manabidi ukitoka uwe nasi sawa ukitoka uwe mwalimu sawa ukitoka uwe ile sawa ndio Sharon yes and then also, you become valuable. Yeah? Unakuwa valuable. Hmm? Ndugu pia kitoka anasema, eh hey, huyo dada ni mwalimu. Hmm? So ndugu akitoka yeye pia anajipanga vizuri anaenda kuwa mwalimu. You see? Lakini wewe hata kusoma utaki. Hmm? 
zile mashamba wazazi wetu mama zetu walikuwa wanaenda na kajembe ya kulima hata pia gaziko hapa tao ni mnalimanga wapi hakuna mahali pa kulima so we must take up responsibilities if it is education soma utoke mzuri hata hmm? wewe uwe na tu pesa tu wako sio za zote hata kibiriti lete pesa mafuta ya taa lete pesa na huyu mtu akikufa what are you going to do <laughs> nyinyi wasichana ni nyinyi naongelesha yani unategemea huyu mwanamume kwa kila kitu hata kibiriti na akikufa and people are dying unajikuta hauna mbele hauna nyuma so as young as you are make sure you make your life right take up responsibilities eh ah. take up responsibilities be a responsible person Sometimes we find okay uh, we are all prone to do that we are we are more prone to run than we are to stand and face it out we find ourselves running sometimes we find ourselves prone to run from work we don't want to work we don't want to work hatutaki kufanya kazi and you remember the bible says you know <laughs> work work never came after the curse work was there before adam fell the bible says god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him but there was no man to till the land so god put man into the body so that he may till the land to till the land means he may work and don't you never think that even in heaven that the people will just be seated the people will be working you know we are going and coming back on earth yes We are going and coming back on earth where there will be no sin, no death, but there will be work. So work working is not a curse. It's in the provision of God. You avoid it, you become lazy. Paul says never be given any food. You can see how serious it is. <laughs> If you don't work and never be given You find in a family one person is the one working and 10 people want to eat from his labor. You can now see how we are killing even our parents. They work very hard to educate you. After your college they still work very hard to feed you. You are not going to look for the barwas you are just there idle. They work until they die. So work is in the provision of God. Work is never a curse. God commissioned Adam to till the land before Adam fell. So it is part of our responsibility. <laughs> Do you love God? <laughs> eh. Hey. And God has always been working. God is a worker. He works day and night. The only time he wanted to rest things went wrong. When he left Adam and went to rest, things went wrong. So he came back at work. God is working. He's working also to see that he achieves his objectives. Since the world was created, God is working. 
Day and night, the Holy Spirit is moving here and there to achieve the objective of God. But when it comes to the sons and daughters of God, we don't want to work, we are too lazy. Young sisters, you must add the value to the family. When you will get married, then you will add value to the family where you are married, your own family. You will not be a, a liability. Sometimes we find out, Good. Sometimes we find ourselves prone, prone to run from work. We don't want to. We, we don't want to work. Some people just think they can make their living without working. You can't make your living without working. But I think Solomon, it was that said we could find here the answer in watching an ant. You know, a little ant. They tell me if that every ant doesn't work and lay in, that ant doesn't eat that winter. Ah, Muchua. <laughs> Na kuna dunia ni hapa Munyama ambaye hako organize kama huyo aunt Wako na king Wako na queen Wako na workers Wako na soldiers Na unasikia nabia nasema ya kwamba Yule aunt ambaye hakuli Hawafanyi kazi Hapewi chakula Kwa hivyo chakula yao wanaweka sutoma alifulani Na inalindwa and how do they do it? Wanajuaje haujafanya kazi? Kama hujafanya kazi kuna harufu inatoka. Waje niwaambie, eh, hey, wale aunty ambao wamefanya kazi wakifika kwa store kuna harufu inatoka kwa wale soja wamelinda store. Alafu wanawaachilia wanakula. Ukienda hapo na hujafanya kazi kuna harufu itatoka wanajua huyu hujafanya kazi. In fact wanafunga store na wanatoa meno hivi. Ukijaribu kuja anafanya You can see how God is organized. <laughs> you can find that in our in the provinces you la jafanya kazi. Ni harufu tu ananuza huyu leo akufanya kazi. Do you love God? Mompenda Mungu. Am I boring you? <laughs> ah. When the Savior calls, I'll hear, I'll answer. I'll be somewhere listening. Yes. As I welcome my dear brother come and give us direction. Let's sing that song before he comes. When the Savior calls, I will answer when he calls for me. I will hear Savior, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. Listening for my name, I'll be somewhere 
listening at this somewhere, listening at this somewhere, listening for my name. God bless you. Yeah, it's good to hear that, that every one of us is responsible. God wants responsible people, and it's good to be reminded to be responsible. We thank God very much for that session and what we have been taught it is good to keep hearing the word because the word does something in us. David, who was, uh, when he was young, he said, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I sin not against you. And we know to sin is to go against the word of God. Unbelief is sin. And so it is good to hear the word and keep hearing the word because that is what keeps us away from sin. We thank God very much. We have our visitors, Pastor Loda, uh, is with us. And Pastor Loda is not a, a stranger here. He has ministered so long in this church. And uh, so we are privileged now to get him out of his busy schedule, ministering in Ivasha, to be with us. And uh, you see, he also has got uh, a friend he came with, Brother Wanyama, from Port Victoria. So we are privileged. And uh, it's a good way to spend this uh, Easter time listening to the word of God that keeps changing us and making us what we should be. We are going to have a break of one hour, and with this that break, we shall eat our lunch. After that, we shall come back for yet another meeting, and possibly, if there will be other quest questions after that, we shall have a short session to uh, respond to your questions. So that is the way it's going to be. After one hour, please let's come back and be together to continue with our meetings. Shall we pray? We thank you, our Heavenly Father. We appreciate what you are doing for us or unto us. Father, you have been very gracious to us. You have given us a chance to know you when we are yet young and precious alone to hear the instructions that are molding us towards you to be people, men and women of purpose. We thank you, Lord. We appreciate loving you, Father. The vessels that thou have given us this weekend to be with us, we know they didn't come here because they had no work to do. We believe they felt responsible to come and minister unto us. And we appreciate you, loving Father. And we pray, Father, whatever you put in them, let them not go back with it. Let it come to us. Let's feed. Enable us to feed, to be fed until we are full of your will. Lord, we pray you give them strength so that as they minister unto us, Thine word may flow, may be directed, Lord, for you know why we are here. You know the needs, you know things that are needed to be molded. We pray you direct your gift to what it should do, so that in the end, when we are through with this, these meetings, we shall be better than the way we came. Bless each one of us, help us. We also appreciate, Lord, that we have our brothers and sisters who are elderly. We are here to keep these people company. We are here to encourage them. And precious Lord, may you bless us also. We commit everything in your hands. Father, as we go out, we are going to have lunch. 
And we thank you, Lord, for this lunch that we are going to take. We appreciate, Lord, those who have prepared it. And we pray you bless them also. And may you bless the food that it may be useful to our bodies. We commit everything in your hand as we pray and believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you very much as we go around. I'll be somewhere walking, walking somewhere, walking, walking for walking. my Lord. I'll be somewhere walking, walking somewhere, walking, walking somewhere, walking for my Lord. We may go out and then we shall be instructed outside there how to take our land.